This is Andrew for The Chosen Prime with a video review of Mastermind Creations R23 Dicamus or their take on a IDW or larger scale generations road buster. Um, Dicamus here is a redeco retool of their previous uh, Titanica which was their version of Strika. It's the same core um, robot here with some slight differences and we'll get to those in a little bit. We can see here, here's the large version of Road Buster. Here's this box standard for most of the uh, reformatted lines. Nice clamshell inside. You get a collector's card. He comes with the one single gun, two uh, kind of missile pods, and then the uh, kind of comic slash uh, instruction booklet that um, the other reformatted ones come with. His final accessory is an alternate head, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is the one that kind of matches his uh, G1 uh, toy head, whereas this one is one that matches more closely to the IDW Comics version of the uh, the wrecker here. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here at Dicamus. Taking a closer look here at Dicamus, you can see this is a nice, big, beefy version of uh, G1 Roadbuster or IDW Roadbuster. All the colors work really well here. This is a nice just mix of uh, orange, green, and brown. And the overall design here is uh, very powerful and strong looking and solid like the other um, reformatted uh, line figures from Mastermind. You know, they give us really uh, chunky and uh, just solid figures. This guy is uh, quite heavy. He's uh, 12 ounces. To the top of his shoulders here, he's about 8 inches. And so he's the biggest version of Roadbuster that we have yet. Um, again, just like other reformatted figures, he's a nice solid figure. Uh, the only kind of issue with him being this beefy is that his posability is somewhat uh, limited. Specifically here, that you just like the G1 toy, you can you can put one of the missile pods or rocket launchers um, on his shoulder here, but his arm kind of gets in the way because of these uh, shoulder pauldrons. So you can move them up, and they're on a separate kind of ball hinge, so they can move up and down a little bit, and then this pauldron can move. But you can see how it all kind of it bangs into the backpack as well as the shoulder here. So you can get him in some nice poses, but he's not exactly as free just because this is kind of big as he is. He does have a uh, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. His hands here are kind of this interesting uh, kind of uh, rotation kind of joint here. So they're like a ball and they get covered up with this panel here, but they do rotate this uh, joint here. The uh, fingers are individually jointed on a single pin and the thumbs on a ball joint. So you can get some, uh, you can get some decent poses out of his hands here and, and they do, you know, they're nice and stiff. He does have a waist articulation, a rotation if you lift up this panel here, just a little bit, but again, he's nice and stiff. Ratchets forward and back, upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, which is quite impressive for a figure of this size. Uh, due to transformation, he's got a rotation joint here at the knee, as well as the thigh. The feet here, the default configuration, he's got a toe that can rotate as well as point. And the heel spur here can uh, uh, move up and down and rotate as well. Now this is the official way to transform his legs um, with the wheels not showing. That differentiates him from Titanic a little bit, but if you wanted to, you can easily just rotate this around on each side if you'd like to have him have a little bit bigger bigger foot in the front and he stands just fine um, either way it's a personal preference on how you kind of want to get him set up he does come with that large g1-esque um, gun here and it just fits into his uh the slot in his palm and you can hold the weapon nice and securely and then the uh, he comes with these two uh, kind of again gun gun pod missile pods one, you can, there's different ports throughout them, so you can either put them on his uh, arm here, and they can rotate. You can mount them up on his shoulder like the G1 toy. There's a port up here, if you want to kind of have it up there, you can do that if you like. Or you can take it, and it'll, it'll peg in underneath the, um, the gun here, as kind of like a, a secondary kind of shotgun launcher, if you like. So, somewhat limited in posability, but just really awesome looking here in his robot mode. Taking a closer look at his head, you can see again, this is the G1-esque head. It does rotate on a ball joint, even though it's in this uh, kind of cavity here. And so if you don't want this, so the G1 head again, he's got that IDW head. Uh, it's on a ball joint, but I think it's a bit too stiff to just kind of pop it off, so I do recommend um, 
kind of coming around here and undoing the screw. And by loosening that screw, it just kind of opened up the two halves so it kind of pegs on a little bit better and then tying together. And so here you can see him with his uh, IW head installed. Much more uh, kind of beefy, um, kind of more, uh, got some different kind of vents here on the face. And definitely matches that version of uh, Roadbuster that was uh, kind of walking down the hall in the All Hell Megatron comics. Just big, massive, mean looking uh, wrecker here. And although he is a big uh, kind of chunky figure, you can get some solid uh, poses out of him with a little bit of effort. And you can see here, he can hold nice brutish, angry looking poses like this one. And with the feet uh, being able to rotate and hold them securely, he can hold these nice poses or ha set them up kind of however you like. It just takes a little bit of effort, but it, he does have the availability to be able to get some really nice looking poses here. So let's go ahead and take a look at his transformation into his APC mode. Transforming Dicamus here is fairly straightforward. We'll begin by first removing his weapons, and we'll start with his hands. So come to each one of the hands here, uh, fold the fingers in fully, and then make sure the thumb fits like that. Take this outer panel and flip it over the fingers, and it'll flip all the way forward, and then rotate it up so that the uh, kind of armored part is facing towards the outer arm. So do the same thing on the other side. So the thumb is flat, kind of push this back and then rotate it like that. Come to his backpack back here and untab it and it'll extend out. And do note when you're transforming into robot mode, it does lock into place if you push it far enough. There's tabs here as well as uh, kind of pieces here that all lock in together when you're going into his robot mode. But bring that up. And then before you forget, this little panel here, the front of the car mode, we want to lift up on it. And it can be a bit tricky to get it up. I'm going to lift it up like that. Come to his chest piece here, untab it. It's on a double hinge as well. And then feed the head through this area here and kind of sandwich that all forward like that. And the arms will come up onto his back, kind of giving room. This panel on his backside, it'll unpeg from these two pieces here to move it out of the way. And now we move down to the legs. The legs are interesting. We want to unpeg um, half of it and it'll open up like this. And we want to have it so that this foot, or the heel spur on Roadbuster is facing inward like that. And then this piece is facing outward and it'll fold in on towards the outside like that. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll open it up. And it might take a little bit to get clearance for this foot to rotate, but we want to rotate it and have it fitting, sitting like that. And then this little piece again towards the outside. So we come to his knees and his thighs. You know, rotate it so the knee is facing into the inside here like this. And then rotate the lower leg so it's facing like this. And you want to use, there's, again, the two joints here at his knee. You want to have it so that it's at kind of a 45 degree angle. And just kind of get it started on each side. So we'll rotate this knee inward, rotate this panel, and then kind of start bending both. And if we look, there are two pegs on this uh, back panel here that'll peg into these uh, holes here. And that'll get us with the correct kind of rotation point once you get it uh, locked in on each side to then now you'll be able to rotate these all the way around. But before we do that, we'll come to the arms and they will sandwich together, peg together, and there are pegs on the on underside of each arm that will peg here onto this back side uh, panel. We want to do that on each one of these, locking it down. Come to the uh, front of the vehicle here. We want to move these wheels to the side. And then take these two panels and they will sandwich down and peg into the front, making the front of the vehicle. They will fit underneath the uh, windshield here like this. Come to the underside. This uh, chest panel that we flipped up will kind of fit into place upwards like that. And now the two legs will sandwich um, in closer to the arms. And there are peg uh, holes here that match tiny little pegs here. And then they'll just, they'll kind of lock into place once you get it all set up. You can see where the foot um, fits in. And this will all kind of peg in nice and securely like that once we get the uh, angles and the joints on the feet uh, correct. Like so. We can come to the back. And then this panel here has got two little tabs that match uh, pieces on the kneecaps. Kind of further getting this all lined up correctly, so just make it so that you're hinged correctly. 
These little kneecaps here will rotate forward. And it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and pegged in. And now we can take, this is his uh, base, his base mode, or base vehicle mode here. We can take uh, his gun and there's a peg hole here. And this will fit and it will lock into place. And then we can take the uh, cannons here and we can install them on his roof. You can also, if you want to, install one um, here. And you've, now you've got Roadbuster in his armored vehicle slash APC mode. So let's take a closer look at this. Taking a closer look here at Dicamus in his vehicle mode. You can see it's nice, big uh, armored APC mode here. He does roll smoothly. His tires are uh, somewhat rubberized. They're not just plastic. You can see how, again, how the weapons can get mounted on top. You can, if you like, take these two rocket uh, launchers here and they can peg into the front just like they did on Titanica. If you want to have him have a bumper, that is an option for you if you want to have the weapons be there. And just overall, really nice looking version of Roadbuster here in a giant uh, armored car mode. So let's go ahead and take a look at his uh, comparisons with uh, other figures. Comparing Dykemus with the official Generations version of Roadbuster that also has an IDW head, you can see how the two uh, stand up side by side and just how much more massive and kind of beefy that the uh, Dykemus here is. You don't get anywhere near as many uh, accessories and weapons as you did with the Generations one, but then you do get the ones that kind of count as far as the shoulder missile and the uh, gun here. You also do get, uh, you know, do you get actually better posability and overall kind of stability? The uh, Generation one, of course, has got a little bit of an issue with its feet. But here, if you're looking to upgrade um, from the Generations version of Roadbuster to kind of add to your records, you can see how well uh, Dykemus here uh, fits that bill. Vehicle mode comparisons, you can see just how much larger Dykemus is than the Generations version of Roadbuster. How it looks like a better kind of armored vehicle versus just kind of a, a, a weaponized uh, APC or off-road vehicle. And yeah, you do get all the additional weapons and ports with the Generations version, but this one on the left just looks a lot more like uh, Roadbuster to me. Road mill comparison with another third-party version of Roadbuster. This is Fans Project's uh, Revolver Core, which is their version of uh, Roadbuster. Uh, mind you, this does not have the upgrade parts on them yet. This is the base uh, model, and you see how the two stack up side by side. Um, of course, Revolver with you can get extra armor, and I'll show that off just in a second. And you can see here how the two match up. But if you're looking for an IDW kind of uh, giant version of Roadbuster, you can see that uh, the uh, reformatted version here definitely uh, fits the bill. Comparing vehicle modes, you can see how the base vehicle mode for Revolver um, compares. Much smaller, but at least you have kind of a half track kind of look. But uh, definitely a bigger version of uh, Roadbuster here on the left. And here's a robot mode comparison with the upgraded version of Revolver. He's got the additional parts from uh, Recoiler and Rift Shot attached, which is the longer, bigger feet pieces, the hand kind of claw pieces here. Um, it's a cool uh, mechanism on Revolver Core here. Um, definitely a lot more loose and nowhere near as kind of uh, beefy and muscular and kind of overall strong looking as uh, Dykemus here. Uh, this was cool. This is a lot better. And vehicle mode comparisons with the fully upgraded Revolver. You can see just, uh, even though with all the extra bulk, he doesn't quite stand up um, to Dykemus on the left here as far as being a massive uh, roadbuster. This again is cool, but uh, just uh, not quite as cool as Dykemus. Road mill comparisons with the previous version of this mold, uh, Titanica, which is their version of uh, Strika from Reformatted. You can see it's the same overall base figure. Pretty much everything's the same. Uh, big differences are different heads. Uh, their chest plates here are different. Um, due to Titanica here having uh, six wheels in her vehicle mode, she's got uh, uh, you know four wheels at the bottom, unlike the single wheel that are on um, Dykemus here. Their arm panels here on the side are different. They uh, Titanica here, she comes with a pair of the guns and the um, with the rocket launchers, whereas uh, Dykemus only comes with the one. But overall, same overall base mold. I think it looks a little bit better as um, Dykemus as Roadbuster, but they're both uh, solid releases. And to me, with the color differences and kind of the way you can kind of transform the legs a little bit differently on Dykemus, they do stand uh, side by side pretty well as uh, companion pieces.
Vehicle mode comparisons, you can see there are differences here as well. Their view screens are different, uh, different hoods. Um, again, you get different weapons. Titanica, of course, has got six wheels versus the four that Dicamus has. Uh, there's ports here for weapons. If you want to move these rocket launchers to the side, you can. And just overall, they look good um, and different enough from one another that if you were to have both, they look like uh, different characters to me here in their vehicle modes as well as their robot modes. Robo Mill comparisons here for Dicamus with other uh, records figures. We've got Voyager Generation Springer. We've got Deluxe Class uh, Cup. This is the repainted version from that recent uh, movie version of the set. We've got Titan's Return Top Spin. We've got Generations Whirl. And then we've got uh, Mastermind Creation Spartan, which is their version of Impactor. And you see how this version of uh, Roadbuster kind of fits to be the biggest um, one of them all in his robot modes. And of course, um, Mastermind is also working on an updated IDW version of Whirl, so we'll get another version of Whirl coming from these guys to match this whole set. And these guys just look really nice here in their rope modes all together as a crew. An alternate mode comparison for uh, Dicamus here. You can see how much larger his uh, armored APC is than the other vehicles. Um, considerably larger than the Deluxes and even uh, larger than um, Impactor here. Just a nice big chunky version of Roadbuster here in the middle. Some final thoughts here for Mastermind Creations R23 reformatted Dicamus or their updated take on a newer, more IDW centric version of Roadbuster. Um, as you've seen through this review, this is a massive um, figure. He's solidly built. He uh, matches the IDW comic version of Roadbuster the best and it's just a nice big bulky figure to kind of match that version of the, the Autobot Wrecker. And compared to you know other versions of Roadbuster that we happen to have, the Generations and Fans Project One, um, this one just seems the most solid, the most like what I would hope a Roadbuster could be. Um, I'm quite happy that we have this newer version of Roadbuster. This is kind of my favorite um, by far. Uh, the Chosen Prime currently does have uh, Dicamus here in stock. If you'd like to add him to your record collection, he does come highly recommended. I really like this toy, so take care.